Okay. Um, looks like we're live on Facebook here and Instagram. It's like Jen Davis, Caleb Thompson, Hannah, Jake Bennett, all hopping on. Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful, lovely Monday morning. <laughs> Jake Bennett says, good morning. Bryn Martin, hey Bryn. Good to see you on here. Um, Hannah Wigdahl. My dad just jumped on. <laughs> uh, Laura, hey Laura, good to see you. Hey Bryn. All right, looks like someone requested to join my live video. Not today, sorry. Don't think I'm supposed to do that. <laughs> um, Eric. Sem Janow just joined. <laughs> this is my grandmother. <laughs> all right, well, um, glad you could all join us this morning. Um, it is 9.39 in the morning, Monday. Jake says, that's not my dad, that's a phone. <laughs> um, Jesse Marcus, good morning. Aaliyah, thanks for joining us. I'm excited that y'all could join me on this lovely Monday morning. We have the uh, joy of digging through the Word of God together. So we're, just, we're gonna get started here probably in another minute or two, just so that more people can join. Josh Sua, good to see you, glad you're here. Leah. Oh man, it's been raining the last couple days. Not too fond of that, but I think it snowed yesterday. I was at my parents' house playing some board games and we looked outside and there was some snow. So I thought we'd be over and done with that. It looks like not so much. Um, how uh, do you think that it's going to snow again? Do you think that We'll have a surprise snow in April, being in Iowa here. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but today, uh, we're going to be digging through... Um, <laughs> my wife just said, hey, bae. I can't stand that word, but hello, wife. <laughs> Good to see you on here. Um, Eric says, yes, always. It will snow again. But... Anyway, all right, so it's 9.41. Um, I'm going to try and keep this to under 20 minutes so that we should be done around 10. And so that should give you plenty of time to have an hour with, uh, in God's Word after this. And I'm going to do a little bit different. So I know that um, the last few devotionals we read through uh, the entire passage and kind of broke it down piece by piece. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about... Um, the passage, obviously, but I think there will be some uh, helpful things uh, in understanding this. Uh, and so we're going to, if you want to open your Bibles or open your smartphones here to uh, Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verses 1 through 11, that's what we're going to be uh, <laughs> looking through. We're going to be uh, studying this morning. And so my hope is that this will be an encouragement for you. This will kind of be a, a send off um, for your own time in, in God's word. And so... Uh, again, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 11. Um, and so, um, again, my name is Jordan. I don't even think I said that. Did I say that? I'm Jordan. Uh, I am uh, one of the uh, campus staff at DMAC. And since we can't really be on campus so much because of this whole uh, coronavirus stuff, we're trying to do our best to, to stay connected and, and uh, encourage you in God's word. And... Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and um, get started. So Hebrews 11, um, you know, it's, it's such a moving account of like the Old Testament saints. And uh, oftentimes it's, it's called the uh, Hall of Faith or the Honor Roll or the Heroes of the Faith. Um, it's like the, all the, the OGs in the Bible. And uh, when I read this, when I read this, you know, usually uh, it's a time... I just read Jake's comment and made me laugh. <laughs> Sorry. 
when I read this, I actually usually get pretty like emotional, pretty teary eyed, um, just to see how uh, God like at works and, and acts in these people's lives uh, when they're responding in faith and obedience. And uh, it's been such an encouragement for me, such a joy for me to read through this. Usually when I'm like really struggling in my own faith or my own confidence or assurance, uh, this is one of the first passages that I go to. Uh, Hebrews 11, uh, just the book of Hebrews in general. Um, if that's something that you're struggling with, I'd encourage you to to study through the book of Hebrews in your own time. Uh, we just see the picture of, of Christ's love for us and um, just the, the joy and the assurance and the hope that we have and, and the future pro- and the promises of God. And so um, before we get into this, though, I, I think that there's a few things that will uh, that will help us kind of dig through and understand the passage. And I know that uh, last week Jesse had mentioned how if, if something isn't making sense to you or um, you're not sure about uh, what the, the passage is communicating to like continue to read and continue to read, and oftentimes those kinds of questions will be answered. Well, I think the same thing can be true of uh, what's before. And so we, we look at uh, this passage, and something that's always really helpful in understanding a passage is context. And so if you're, you're reading a passage, you're like, maybe I missed something uh, in the prior verses or in the prior chapters of this book that will help me interpret or, or dig through this. And so that's what we're going to do this morning. I'm going to read a little bit in Hebrews 10, 32 through 34. And then I think that will give us a good platform to help us see uh, why the writer is communicating this. And uh, it'll be really helpful for us. And so uh, verses t- uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 32 through 34. It says, Remember the earlier days when after you had been enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with sufferings. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to taunts and afflictions, and at other times you were companions of those who were treated that way. For you sympathized with the prisoners and accepted with joy the confiscation of your possessions because you know that you yourselves have a better and enduring possession. So don't throw away your confidence, which has great reward. Okay, so he says, you sympathized and... and Accepted with joy the confiscation of your possessions. Why? Because you know that you yourselves have a better and enduring possession to come. And so, uh, this is the kind of life that the book of Hebrews is aiming to produce. There's a high price of following Christ. You know, there's a cost. But then, they accept joyfully what it demands no matter what. And all the truth that we see in Hebrews is aimed at making us into this kind, these kinds of people. People that take risks to bring the love of Christ to others. Like, how though? You know, we look at 1034, and it says that they have a better, that because you know that yourselves, you have a better and enduring possession to come. And so the power to joyfully sacrifice is knowing that there's something better to come. You know, we, we think of, of anything, you know, um, going to the gym, working out. It's like it, there's like we're willing to go through some of the, the pain of, of like exercise because we know what it produces or what comes. And, and if you don't live by this confidence, uh, you will be continually thinking about how much you're losing, like every time that you make a sacrifice for others. So anytime that we, we go to, to do something or to sacrifice for others, if we don't have this confidence or this hope in what's to come, this joy that's found in Christ, you're, you're always going to be thinking about like what you're going to lose. But, but if this life is just a brief prep for eternal joy with Christ, then you can freely risk all, like Paul says in Romans 8. It says, The sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is revealed to us. 2 Corinthians 4, 6, uh, 17 says, For our momentary light affliction is producing for us an absolutely incomparable, eternal weight of glory. It says the present time, like the afflictions that we're, we're enduring, like where our hope, where our faith is found in, it's like producing an, an incomparable, eternal weight of glory. It's like I, I look to what is to come. So the whole book is written to give us a foundation 
of hope that's to come. It's to strengthen our faith to trust in the eternal God. And, and as we read through chapter 10 here, uh, what more, like, you know, when you read this, it's like, what more can the author say uh, to, to help us trust in God? And then we get to chapter 11, and he gives us examples of people who by faith hold on to the future reward with joy. And so we see people suffering, like in the present time that the author is writing this, people are suffering, people are experiencing hardships, and, and then the writer is like writing to them to look to the future joy, just like all of the Old Testament saints did. And so I know that last week we talked about how faith, uh, like we are justified by faith in Christ. We are justified by faith before God. Well, this week we're going to look about look at how faith uh, like produces like sanctification. So it's like this this process of, of being made like holy. So like what we believe like really shapes what we do. Like our trust in God, like our trust in the hope to come shapes like how we act, how we live now. And it it's producing something in us. And so I believe that chapter 11 was written to deepen our confidence in God's promises so that we can turn away from the fleeting pleasures of sin. And so uh, we're going to kind of read through the passage, and uh, we're going to have some brief time together. We've got about 10 more minutes, and, and my hope is that as we read through this, it's going to encourage you uh, in your own study of God's Word through Hebrews 11. My hope is that it will uh, encourage you to look to the future prom- or the promises of the future hope that we have in Christ, that this will cause you to reflect uh, in your heart where your hope lies now, especially in trying times like this. You know, the world seems like it's mass chaos with uh, the COVID-19 stuff going on. But it's like we have uh, a lot to to be thankful for and to put our hope in. And so uh, it's such a timely passage, right? It's such a timely passage. And and so I'm going to read the first verse here. And we're going to, it's like a definition almost of like faith. It's a small uh, definition. So I'm going to, I'm going to read through this and then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, get to it. So Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. So that's what the CSB says. And, and something that can be helpful in your own study times is, is when you're reading through a passage, if you're like, the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen, oftentimes what can be really helpful is like looking at other translations. You know, sometimes translations from the original Greek text like finding the, the right word that explains this can be difficult in English. And so other translations might have something that will help you uh, understand like the, the NASB or the ESV or the NIV, things like that. And so I know that other translations say that it is the substance of what is hoped for or the assurance of what is hoped for, the proof or the evidence of what is not seen. And so... Um, just like, uh, I think this will help us understand this. We're going to kind of explain that. I remember reading through this and thinking like, what does that mean? That the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is seen, even now, sometimes like I struggle to think about like, what does that mean? Like if we're going to put a definition of faith, what does that mean? And so, uh, I think that just like my physical eyesight is a sense, you know, like, I look at something and I, I see it. It's a sense that gives me evidence of the material world. Faith is the sense that gives us evidence of the invisible or spiritual world. So I don't like using the term like sixth sense. You know, it makes me think of that movie. But it's like my eyesight or my touch is like they're, like I'm touching this table or I'm, I'm touching this Bible. It's like the evident, the physical evidence of what I see well, faith is the sense or like uh, what we use to understand what is not seen. Why? Well, because these things are in God. Like God is spirit. God is not physically here with me right now. And so because these things are in God who is spirit and, and for things that are in the future, it's like that we can't see. And so when it says faith is the substance of what is hoped for, It's like faith is like the sense that that we use as Christians to understand what is hoped for, like the God's promises that he's given to us. 
And so when he says the evidence the, or the proof of what is not seen, he says if you have the, like a, the substance before you or you can see it, there's no like use for faith, right? Like if, if God was just standing in front of me and I, like he just told me to do things, like I would just, okay, I see you and I do it. So it's like if you have the substance before you, like it's, it's like the physical realm, like there's no use for it. But faith is needed for what you can't see or touch. And so to know God, to please God, like we see in verse 6, it says, Now without faith it is impossible to please God, since the one who draws near him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. So if to know God and to please God, you must have faith in him. You must have faith in God. And so uh, when I read through this, though, I, oftentimes there, there's this tendency not, not so much anymore, but this tendency to think that faith contradicts reason. Like, if I can't touch it, or I can't feel it, or I can't taste it, like, that it's not reasonable. Well, I, I don't think that those things contradict faith at all. In fact, I think that faith goes beyond reason. So, like, for example, I think that... Um, like one can objectively prove that the Bible is arguably the most unique book like ever published and has impacted society more than any other book. But only faith can prove that the Bible is the word of God. Therefore, like this is beyond reason, but not a contradiction to reason or against it. And so I think at, at, like faith is like how we know God, is how we understand God, it's how we... Uh, trust in his promises, you know, like we're justified by faith, but we're, we're also sanctified or changed in our faith. And so like the person who believes and trusts in God will make decisions based on those things. Just like all of the examples of people that he lists off here in Hebrews 11. I know that we're only going through one through 11, but this goes far beyond. I mean, there's like 38 verses, 39, excuse me, 40 verses in chapter 11 and much of it is like examples uh, of people living by faith. And, and something that I love about this is like when you read this, uh, if you read the Old Testament about all of the examples of people, none of them were like extraordinary people. Most of them were pretty ordinary, uh, just like you and me. Um, but what set them apart, what, why they're in the Word of God, is like they lived their life by faith. And so... We see in verse 4, by faith Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain did. Verse 5, by faith Enoch was taken away and so he did not experience death. He was not to be found because, he was not to be found because God took him away. Verse 7, for Noah, after he was warned about this, was not yet seen and motivated by godly fear, but an ark to deliver his family. By faith he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and set out for a place that he was going and received as an inheritance. He went out even though he did not know where he was going. You know, verse 10, for he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. So all of these things, what it's producing as we read through this, it's like these people, by faith, were not looking to what is seen, what is unseen, trusting God's promises that what he said would come true, and they banked their life on it, and it changed the way that they lived. They were exercising faith by living in obedience to God. And that's like, like if we never had faith, like if we don't trust in God's promises, like what, what is the purpose of like obeying him if we don't believe that what he says is true? It's like, it doesn't make any sense, right? And so I think that faith is the assurance and confidence in his promises for the future. You know, just like Paul, our momentary light affliction is producing for us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. It's like, do you know God's promises and do you trust them in what is not seen? You know, we talked a little bit about last night or uh, on Friday about Abraham who lived by faith. And so this, this story, all of this is just ordinary people doing extraordinary things because they believed God. 
And so you can look through all of these examples in your quiet time. Uh, we just have a few more minutes. And, and I encourage you, as you're reading through Hebrews chapter 11, um, you know, ask these questions on the, on the page of the, the new life. You know, we're in, in the, um, the seventh one, uh, Faith Part 2. And, you know, questions in the back of this book is like, what does God want me to know? How does this passage change how I live? It's like I, I ought to live by faith. If I have to trust in God's word, if I have to look to the future promises, you know, the hope that that's set before us, how should this change how I, I ought to live? Like, why does God want me to do these things? Are there examples in this passage I can follow? You know, what does this say about God? As you dig through this, it's okay to like break it down. Ask yourself these kinds of questions. Like, this ought to, to change the way that we live. And so uh, I just want to encourage you with that today. And I'm going to end with, with one more thing. Uh, in, in chapter 12, verse 1 uh, and 2, it says, Therefore, since we, have also, we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the source of and perfecter of our faith. So the source and the perfecter of our faith, why we can trust in God is like what he's proved for us, to us, and what ensnares us or hinders us, you know, or, or like really blots out or, or uh, smothers our faith is when we trust in the here and the now. We trust, we rely on ourselves and not in Christ and in God and what he's done for us. And so, um, there are so many opportunities to do that right now. Unfortunately, we're all at home. We're all stuck at home, and 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 there's going to be this tendency to want to like rely on the flesh, you know, our sin that that so easily ensnares us. But if our focus, if the eyes of our heart, if our faith is put in, you know, Jesus, the the source and perfecter of our faith, it causes us to live uh, in a much different way. And obedience to him. And so uh, my encouragement to you, my hope to you today is that that's what you would do, that you would look to, look to the cross, look to the source and perfecter of our faith uh, as we continue our series through the new life, uh, as you spend your devotional time uh, in Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, be thankful uh, for all of the examples that we have in the faith um, and, and really uh, ask yourselves those kinds of questions as you're studying God's word today. So I'm thankful for you all. I love you all. I'm going to pray really quick, and then we'll end our time. Uh, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for all of these people. Uh, I thank you that uh, we have social media and a platform to be able to read God's Word and connect together in community. I know that we can't be together physically, um, but we are together uh, in spirit and in heart. And I pray that your Word uh, would go out, that it would penetrate and impact the hearts of these people. Um, we trust you with it, and I pray that you would uh, strengthen our faith that we would look to you as the perfecter uh, of our faith and that we would uh, long to be with you someday, Lord, that we would look to the future promises, the future hope that we have set before us. And so we love you, Lord. Um, we just pray these things in your name. Amen. All right. Love you all. Thanks so much for joining me on this Monday morning. Uh, same time every day, 938. Uh, we're going to be going through God's word. Uh, spend the next. I encourage you to spend the next hour uh, in God's word, just reading and studying it, meditating on it. Uh, be very prayerful as we uh, go through this time together. Thank you.